Welcome to our lecture online. In the last video we saw that if the condition that you're testing for becomes very rare, one out of a thousand, and if the parameters of the test aren't that spectacular, if the test has a sensitivity of 98% and a specificity of 95%, with those rarity of the condition, one in a thousand, the probability that the subject has the disease when they were tested positive dropped all the way down to 1.92%. Hmm. Well, that was the case. Well, actually, it wasn't one in a thousand. In one of a thousand, it was 16.53%. In one in 10,000, 0.1%, it dropped to 1.92%. That's when it became a really small number. In other words, you test positive, the probability that you actually have the disease or the condition you're testing for is almost zero. It's like, that's not a good test. So what if we could make the test better? Let's increase the specificity of the test to 99% instead of 95%. What does that mean? Well, that means that instead of having a 5% false positive rate, that now drops to just 1% false positive rate. So now we have just a 1%, 1 in 100 tested has a false positive. Does that increase the probability that if someone does test positive, well, they have the condition, the probability that they have the condition that you're looking for, well, that should increase. So what changes in the equation now? Well, here's the 5%. Instead of 5% here, this now changes to just 1%. That's the only change. Everything else stays the same. 98% represents the sensitivity of the test. 0.1% represents the number of people or the probability that a person tested or a subject tested has the condition you're looking for. That's repeated over here. And here we have 99.9%. .9%. Well, that is the percent of the population that is healthy, that's being tested. But now the rate at which you see false positives has drastically reduced from 5% down to just 1%. That should increase the probability that when you test positive, you actually do have the condition you're looking for. So let's see how that changes the probability. All right, so taking the denominator, we go 0.98 times 0 0.001 plus 0.999 times 0 0.01. Take that to the numerator and multiply that times 0.98 and times 0 0.001 equals, and now we're at 8.93%. So now we can say that this becomes equal to 8.93%. A big improvement over the 1.92, but still not stellar. If I was getting a test done for a rare condition and the test comes out positive, the doctor would then come up to me and say, well, you have an 8.93%, about 9% chance that you actually have the condition we're testing for. That's not very good. So I'll go to the doctor, well, that's, that's almost not significant, is it? What can we do so that we're sure that I have the condition or sure that we don't have the condition? And that's something we'll get into. Well, what we need to do is run the test over and over and over again. By running the test over and over and over again, the probability will begin to increase. If each time we run the test, we still come out positive, well, then you can see that, yes, the probability will go up. And we'll show you how that's done as well. Another thing we can say is, well, what if we're 100% sure that if you're healthy, the test comes out negative? Well, then what would change is this would go to zero, and then the probability would go to 100%. So ultimately, the probability that the result that you get will indicate the true result, the true thing you're looking for. If you test positive, do you actually have the disease? Well, if the number of escapes, or in this case, I shouldn't say escapes, but if the number of false positives drops to zero, then the probability goes up to 100%. And so that's the key to any test. You want that specificity to be as, as large as possible. In other words, as few false positives as possible. The more false positives your test has, the lower the probability that the result will indicate you do actually have the condition you're looking for. And so hopefully that gives you a good insight on how that works. And then we'll show you the other method using this technique right here. And then in addition to that, we'll show you what you need to do as a doctor. If the results come out pretty low, well, let's run the test several more times. And then you'll see how that will increase the probability as well. And that's how it's done.